When you first install EasyPay, you'll have a blank system, similar to what you see here. There'll be no employees set up in the system, so you'll need to add some employees. So let's go up to the top of the screen and choose Add Employee. When you click Add Employee, you'll get a blank employee record. Let's fill in the details. So we'll call this employee John Smith, give him a job title of trainee. We could choose a department for this employee. You can set up further departments up in the settings options here. But for now, let's just leave the default department. You tick the box indicating whether he's director or not. Next, we can choose the type of contract that this person has. These are the types of contract offered by the Gibraltar Employment Service. The most common ones being permanent full-time, permanent part-time, and casual. The casual option may not be the most obvious option. It's, um, it's for that situation where employees don't work a particular number of hours each week or month. They come in and work the days that they're asked to work. So um, casual is quite a common occurrence in the retail industry. But for this demo, we're going to choose the permanent full-time, which is the most common option. Next, we'll choose the payroll type. We can choose monthly, weekly, fortnightly, four weekly, or annual payrolls. The most common ones being monthly or weekly. So let's choose the most common one, monthly. Next, we set the number of days or hours in the working week. The, this information is used to calculate the hourly rate of the employee. The most common number of hours and days in the working week, well, most people work five day a week. And hours, very common for 40 or 37.5 or 39. But for this demo again, we'll, we'll choose 40 hours. You can of course over type if there's a different value, but let's keep it at 40. Next, you can specify the annual salary. You could also specify it as a monthly wage or weekly wage or hourly rate. So I'm going to enter an annual salary of 18,000. And as you can see, the system will show the corresponding value in monthly salary and also as hourly rate. Going up to top right, we can now enter the tax reference number of the employee. This information will need to be given to you by the employee on a little slip that he's received from the tax office. This figure is important because without the tax reference number, the tax office will not recognize many of the reports. So I'm going to just put in a number, for example, a random number. Again, tax code. Again, this will be supplied to you by the Gibraltar Tax Office, uh, well, by the employee who has visited the Gibraltar Tax Office. We have all the tax codes in the system. The most common ones obviously being numbers up to 72 and JIB, the gross income based system. I'm going to choose the gross income based system for this example. In some cases, people on the gross income base system will be given an additional amendment figure by month or week. So let's put that in. Next, you choose the social insurance type of the individual. The most common one is obviously earnings related, but the employee may have a slip of paper indicating that they are one of the other types. So that all the types are here, but we're going to choose earnings related the most common one. Next we go to payments to employee. Obviously now we have to decide how we're going to be paying the employee. You can choose bank letter, check, cash, EQ local, bank line or banks. Most companies will pick bank letter, check or cash, but EQ local produces a file. Similarly bank line and banks produce files which go to the banking system. So. Let's choose bank letter for this example. We can now choose the bank. If we hit change, we can choose from a list of banks that are set up in the system. If the bank that we want is not in the system, we can actually add another bank to this list or edit the details. But I'm going to just choose one of the more common banks in Gibraltar.
details of the bank appear and you can put in the account number so I'm just going to put random account number in and I'll put in a fictitious account name and you can put a pay reference in here which is quite common you might put in something in here like for example pay or if you want to keep it anonymous just keep it blank or in the case of a building society you may actually be given a roll number so that's what that's for. Once you've entered this information you can move to the next tab additional details. These fields here are all used on a number of reports that are sent to the government so it's useful to fill these in so the system can complete those reports for you. Um, but they're not essential for doing the payroll itself so I'm going to leave them blank for now. Year-to-date summary on the side here will show you the year-to-date values of all the pay slips you've issued. If you're starting halfway through the year with the payroll, you can actually put in the year-to-dates or opening balance figures right here now. But if you're starting at the beginning of the year, there's no need to do that. So I'm just going to skip that section. You'll see the other tabs. We have history records. There are obviously no records for this new employee and reports. So there's nothing else to set up. We can just click hit save. As you can see now on the list behind we now have one employee set up. I'm going to go very quickly and add a second employee. So let's add another employee. We're going to put in some slightly different details. We're also going to be monthly payroll and salary. Here we're going to specify a different tax code. Another common one you might see is 72 with uh, additional allowance. Social insurance setting. You can choose the method of payment. Again, I'm just going to choose bank letter. Also choose NatWest. As you can see, again, we're already done. So just hit save. We now have two employees set up on the system. So that's how easy it is to set up employees for payroll. If you want to go back and look at an employee, you just have to go back into the list by double clicking on the employee's name and it'll bring up their record and you can review the details you entered. So once you've set up employees, you can now go into the payroll screen and do the payroll.